Uh, hi. Uh, we're here in Hamilton, and this is... Wax Mannequin. We've been touring several times a year for the past, about four, five years, so it's the kind of person that gets really tired while I'm driving, yeah. so I'll drive 16 hours and be like on the verge of sleep the whole way, so I'm pretty confident that I'm not ever actually going to fall asleep. No, I do the night drive, I just, it's just like that the whole time, I'm just like about to fall asleep, but I've got, I've built up mechanisms in my mind where I, I'm, I'm, con I'm I believe I've got this biofeedback thing where I can release endorphins and um, what do you call the stuff that makes you energetic when you're a sports star the sure those things I don't know I just wake myself up using a brain trick and very and chewing on a spoon works uh, when I'm driving I can chew on a spoon for a while and that tends to wake up because I think I think there's a, there's a I think there's a genetically evolved thing that tells us not to fall asleep while there's food in our mouth because then we'll choke and die but there's no genetically evolved thing that says not to fall asleep when you're driving because then you'll crash and die. Yeah. So you take, a, take advantage of these older genetically evolved things. A lot of art and music in this town and there's a big, like, James Street, which is like a street that for the past 10, 15 years is re getting really old and run down. It's really kind of coming alive these days because of, you know, art galleries and people moving in and putting on little shows and lofts and stuff. So, it's, so is it on the up and up or the down? I think it's on up and up. A certain area will build up culturally while other areas will decline. But um, I don't know. I don't know how much of it has to do with economics, but it seems like the city frequently makes stupid economic decisions. But I, I, I think, like, being from a... a polluted, broken down city is actually really good for creativity and art. It keeps you humble and it keeps you broken down yourself. We did a, uh, an, a little interview for the Globe and Mail, this was a year ago, and they compared us to Montreal and Seattle. And we all, we had a little giggle. I was the only negative quote in the thing because I don't believe any of that, uh, any of this crap. Like it's still total working class town for the most part and eternal underdog status in Edmonton. Like. There isn't a lot of people who will just come to shows. No one wants to buy advance tickets. No one wants to like, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Everyone's just like, yeah, I'll see what I'm doing that night. So it's really tough to like, to fight against like prairie apathy and like and just like um, uh you know like because nothing's ever sold out and nothing's ever busy metric was coming through yeah. here and uh they they sold, like 12, they sold advanced 12 advanced tickets and they sold out two shows in edmonton <laughs> quebec is pretty insane quebec is like living in uh a medieval village <laughs> where you have to use your sword uh to make your own laws i'm having fun in montreal yeah? i think i'm having more fun than todd yeah. Just because it's a little bit easier for me, as being a, a cello player, like, yeah, you just go there and you can be a cellist if you want to. Ontario's music scene has one of, like, the more happening scenes as far as maybe the world goes, you know? Like, anyone from this area will do a tour in Ontario to fund the the rest of their tour for wherever the le the rest of the well, leg goes, you know? Ontario. No, no, a lot of people do that, you know? Yeah. Like, There's quite a few bands around here, and a lot of the bands... Uh, get together and play and like there's a lot of great places uh, one problem though now is a lot of the venues have closed in or, or are closing in Winnipeg it's what cold. venues have shut down uh, Collective Cabaret Collective and the Albert yeah. is closing soon no the Albert is going to stay open oh really from what I hear Mike Petco had a meeting <laughs> the band yeah. sleepy. The band. Uh, I'm giving you the your keys. They're here on this bench. So if you want to lock the door? You can. Where are we? Where are Winnipeg. Restaurant. Just somewhere to get some food at the Forks.
Uh, my name is Chris Connell. I am the station manager at CJLO at Gordon University. I think playing as many festivals as possible is a good way to, uh, to promote yourself. Yeah. And, uh, it shows that you're active, that you actually care about what you're doing as opposed to, you know, just sitting at home opening for whoever comes into town. So by going out there and touring, not only do you increase your fan base to people that might not have heard you just from playing in your hometown, but um, it shows that you're, you're, this is your thing. The best thing to do is really just go to all the college radio stations, all the underground radio stations, and speak to the music directors, speak to their promoters, or see if they know anyone that uh, is doing a show that you might be able to team up with. And the best really thing to do, uh, there's national conferences, such as North by Northeast, uh, that promotes music like this. So if you go to those, you can do some networking, you can meet people that, uh, that are in the various places around Canada, so you can always have a contact in each city. So as you move around, you're able to team up and pool resources, so you save some money here and there. But, um, first of all, why don't you say um, your name and what your band is and where you're from? Jordan, and uh, I'm in uh, Zedibooth. Tell me a bit about your experience with that uh, touring. So far, have you... With touring, we did one tour. We've only done one tour. How did you find it? Was it financially successful? Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't really keep track of that stuff. I think one of the guys does. He's got a beard, so we trust him. <laughs> but uh, we made enough. What we did is we put a gas deposit down. All of us put 250 in for gas before we left. And at the end of the trip, we all got that back. Okay. So I guess we, we, we did okay. It is a bummer when like you piss each other off, you know? And then you have to do something that that's supposed to feel free, and that's supposed to feel uninhibited, and uh, you're supposed to have fun doing it, and you're pissed off because he said, she said. No matter what you're you're doing, you're free of what you were doing, you know. So it's ten days of something different than what you're normally. Would you say it's just a glorified road trip? Yeah, pretty much. It, 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 if you look at it that way, you're never really let down. I've met some really sweet people who make really good music who have been doing this forever, and they know it's sweet, and they know they feel it, and they keep making good music because they feel it and because it's natural to them, and people keep enjoying the music because it's fresh and it's good, right? So it doesn't really matter that they're 40 and they're scraping by because it's something that they enjoy. But then I met some people who are like 45 and they hate the government and they haven't bathed in a, in a decade, and they're still writing the shitty songs they wrote in the 80s, you know? And, and uh, and, and I guess in that way, it would be kind of a bummer, except all the people that I've met in that situation are kind of oblivious to their own situations. Most of our audience, and probably most of yours, are people that wake up and don't know where their all it is, you know? Like, that's just the reality, but those people are sweet, and those people are the ones who drive the most and cut the most drugs, you know? All right, well, do you have anything else that you want to add about uh, touring in Canada? Uh, it's a great place to play. It's a great place to tour, at least the West Coast is, but I assume uh, the East Coast is too, because it's just as pretty as the West in different ways, and people are cool there in different ways. Just like the States is the States, Montreal is Montreal, the West Coast is the West Coast, Tibet is Tibet. Everywhere you go, it's something new, and there's a new audience to appeal to and to get your music to. So why not? I just had returned from another tour and bought this 91 spanking good condition 91 Honda Civic. We went east and it was fine and we started heading west and we got to f back from Newfoundland to Fredericton and uh, the gas tank started smelling and fixed the smelly gas tank. I got from Fredericton to North Bay and the uh, and the engine started creaking, so we fixed the creaky engine. We got from uh, North Bay to uh, Edmonton, and uh, the oil started leaking. And I just left the leaky oil because I knew that there was a leaky oil pan. When you're touring, what kind of van do you guys drive? What, what do you? What do you? What is your <laughs> wagon? wagon. <laughs> when, we, when we when we play Duluth, <laughs> once a year we bring our car, <laughs> and we can't bring gear across the border, so we pretty much whore ourselves to use gear. So. That's our tour. We have a Dodge 2000 Ram. It's uh, not 
we, we got it cheap because it wasn't really working very well, but our singer's a mechanic, so we need new tires, new brakes. New tires and brakes and, I don't know, a bunch of other mechanic type stuff that <laughs> I didn't know much about. But, yeah, ball joints, ball joints and FM radio fluid, I think. Tires. Transmission died, and we just got the van, so we just, you know, spent four grand on it and then spent another, I don't know, 1500 and yeah. You know, so the money that we were up on was gone pretty much. So, but you know, if that didn't happen, it would have been. It, it was great. You should stay in Canada too. If we didn't go into the states, that never would have happened. Yeah. So. Um, we actually rented a really nice uh, cargo van, and uh, just had two people in the van, and the rest of us, thankfully, were in other vehicles. But uh, yeah, it was really expensive though, especially just for one show because of uh, jobs and such. Um, we couldn't play any any other gigs. It was just to Toronto and back. So. You know, the van ended up costing, you know, five, six hundred dollars for the four days or whatever it was. And yeah, the last uh, year was, uh, <laughs> it was bad for breakdowns. I think we spent twenty-three hundred dollars or so on repairs. Are you guys still using the same van? No, no, we've since <laughs> upgraded. Okay. That's why we haven't been on tour for a year. We were headed for Montreal on our way out to the East Coast for our first East Coast tour. And our, um, on our big old piece of crap van, uh, the tailpipe fell off, melted a hole in our gas tank, and we were dragging a metal tailpipe and sparking while it just pissing gas on the highway. And we're all smoking and, you know. And uh, so we got it fixed in a town called Trenton, Ontario by some really weird mechanics. They were like, we were supposed to play like second of four bands and the last band was playing. They're like, okay, you can get on. Just And so we set up on the sidewalk and then we had to drive Fred to Fredericton that night. We couldn't stay the night. So caffeine pills and back on the road. I just got my driver's license in July. So for the majority of the tours, half of them have been on the Greyhound and half I've opened for bands that had a van. That was kind of my main requirement for touring for a long time was bands would email me and ask if they could do shows. And I'd say, well, if, do you have a car? And then they'd say, yeah. And I'd say, well, we should do a tour guys and then then I did drop me around like designated drivers <laughs> yeah. so as you can see our van just broke down uh, about an hour from home the last possible time I guess we didn't knock on wood enough How are you guys feeling? The tour is pretty much over. Well, right now I feel like shit because our bed broke down and I really want to be home. You know, just some sheets. <laughs> How are you feeling right now about the tour? Uh, it's hard to put it all in perspective now. We've been waiting here in Sycamus to get our van fixed. Who's also but We're tired. I drove all night last night and I haven't slept yet. Me and Dave were 14. Dave, our bass player, obviously you know what I'm talking about. Like, we had this discussion where this, it was when we both started to love music. When we both got really into Metallica, we said, "Whoever makes it, I'm gonna take the other guy with me." You know, like both of us promised the other that just in case, like whatever might happen. And I truly feel horribly betrayed that that he did this because I'm putting myself in his shoes and. In his shoes, what would I have done? Like, if I had a physical problem, I would have stopped doing any drugs or alcohol or shitty food. I would have fucking slept in the back of the van the whole time and just play the shows. But I just really think it demonstrated a, a lack of commitment on a personal level to leave. And also, more importantly, a lack of commitment to his friends, like, who have been loyal to him for 11 years fucking years you know? yeah. it's totally like that godfather moment you know like yeah he's he's my fredo like how could you do this to me dave like, he's fucked us in the most key moment of our career <laughs> um, we're rolling for the big day, Dan? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh. Very excited. Nice. All right, gentlemen, yeah. lift a glass. Have a, have a good wedding life, marriage. 
with the togetherness and all. Should I be looking in the lens or at you or? I wish you the best, but I'm, I'm after just taping a bunch of people, I think you'll hear that about 50 times in order, so maybe I'll splice them up. I wish you all the best. So did you hear the other 20 people say that before you? Or? Or are you, are you, are you going to get sincere here, buddy? Congratulations, Dan and Mel. Uh, if you guys are happy together for the rest of your lives, I know you will be. And yeah, I'm really happy for you guys. Congratulations. Thank you.